Over my career, I had to fix websites that were hacked, slow, broken, or completely offline with absolutely no way of recovering them. And every single time these problems happened because of the same mistakes I see people make over and over and over and over again. So finally, I compiled a list of the top six mistakes and how to fix them, arranged into three tiers. Let's start with the most important, the critical mistakes, because I really want for you to fix these. Leaving the XML RPC endpoint enabled, using the default login URL and database prefix, and having incorrect file and folder permissions. Okay, technically, these are four separate mistakes, but they're in the same really, really, really bad category and can be fixed with a single tool. Let's break it down. The xmlrpc.php file is an obsolete API endpoint that is a massive open door for hackers. It's not needed for modern websites, but is actively used by bots to amplify brute force attacks, testing hundreds of passwords with a single request, and to use your server as part of a DDoS attack against other sites, which can get your hosting account suspended without you even doing anything wrong yourself. You need to deactivate this API endpoint. The easiest way to do so is use the all-in-one security plugin on WordPress. If you install this free security tool, you'll have a new section called WP Security. Navigate to the firewall section and completely block access to the XML RPC and XML RPC pingback. Boom, one mistake fixed. Next, you want to change your default login URL because every single bot in existence knows that you use slash wp-admin as the login page. So bots automatically crawl random pages adding slash wp-admin at the end of the URL and simply start guessing passwords or use compromised databases with leaked passwords to try and get in that way. If you change the default login page to something like slash emit logs in here, nobody will even try to access your admin controls. To do this, go into the brute force section, enable the login URL rename, and give it a wacky name that only you'll know, like Emmet logs in here. After you do this, the default slash wp-admin will no longer work. Only your new login URL will be reachable, avoiding you thousands of bot hacking attempts. At the same time, you want to deploy a similar strategy for your database, because again, absolutely everyone knows that the default database prefix is wp underscore. So go into the database security and either think of a prefix yourself or generate one using this button right here. After it's done, you'll need to log back into WordPress and you'll see your prefix is now random, saving your database from 99% of attacks. I can't stress how important this is. And from my experience, these two are the most common attack vectors that I see on beginner websites. But that's not all because you still need to fix your file permissions. Since your website is made up of files, you want to control who can read, write, and interact with the files. He who controls the files controls the website. Permissions work on three types of users, owner, group, and public. That's why they're made up of three numbers, one for each type of user. Four means you can read the file, two means you can write to the file, and one means you can execute it. If I go to my WP security tab and run a file check, I can see I have an issue with one of my file permissions. It's 644, and it should be 640, meaning I, the owner, should be able to read and write the file. Groups should be able to read the file since the groups are server management software and the public shouldn't be able to read, write or interact with it. It should be a zero, but it currently allows anyone to read my public WP config file, which is a big no-no. Leaving your files available to be read by the public or worse, permitting them to write or execute the code can lead to your website getting hacked, installing software you didn't want installed, or simply breaking your project just for the fun of it. So once again, using WP security, fix your permissions. So by doing these four fixes, you get out of the critical category, but we still have the performance and long-term ones left. And for these two categories, I'll use websites hosted on Hostinger 
as an example. So your controls might look different, but all web hosts should have the controls needed hidden somewhere. In general, if you don't like your current host, I highly recommend switching to Hostinger. They'll make the switch for free, and all you need to do is buy a plan with them. I'll leave a discount link in the description so you can grab a pro tier for your plan with a 10% exclusive discount. Okay, so for the performance, I've seen website performance get absolutely hammered by inefficient cron jobs. What exactly are cron jobs? Think of them as your website's scheduled to-do list. By default, WordPress handles this list in a very inefficient way. It only checks its to-do list when a visitor comes to your site. And that's extremely stupid. For low traffic sites, this means your scheduled tasks like backups might never run since the user never triggers them. And for high traffic websites, this means that every time a user comes, instead of serving content, the website is frantically checking its to-do list like, did, did, did I do the backups? Did I serve the cache? Did I delete the comments? It's not necessary to do on every load for every user. The proper way to do this is to have cron jobs server side, not website side. So they trigger once every 30 minutes or so, no matter if there are users or not. So first of all, install WP Cron Troll by going into plugins, add new and typing in WP Cron Troll. Now, if you go into settings, there are cron schedules where you can click on cron events and see all of these scheduled tasks and when they're supposed to run. We need to deactivate this so they run on a timer instead of being activated by users. Go to your hosting control panel. For me, again, as I mentioned, it's Hostinger. Navigate to your website and find the file manager. Got it? Okay. So inside the file manager, you'll want to find a folder called public HTML. This is where all of your website files are and a file called wp-config. Now find a line called that's it. Stop editing here at the very bottom of this file and just above it, paste in or type out this define command that will disable native cron jobs. And by the way, don't forget to save your changes because they won't take effect otherwise. Now that we have these cronies disabled, we need to set up the real deal. Go back to Hostinger in the Advanced tab. Yeah, we're using the Advanced tab, like a pro website owner, imagine that. We'll create a server-side cron job. So select Custom and type in this command. I'll leave it in the comments so you don't have to pause the video right here. Don't forget to change the website name to your actual website name. This is different for everyone. So please don't forget because your website cron jobs will be broken otherwise. Now, if we go back to WP cron troll, we can see that the native cron jobs are disabled, but the tasks are still scheduled to run. This means it's working. And at this point, we can uninstall WP control as we only needed it to check if everything is working properly. And finally, for the biggest overtime mistake, I can make an educated guess that your emails are either already going to spam or they'll start going to spam sometime in the near future because you're probably still using the default PHP mail function to send emails. You absolutely need to set up a free SMTP service ASAP to make sure your emails are sent from a clean IP, are authenticated and properly verified. This is simply impossible to do if you're using the default PHP mail function. And if you've never made any SMTP changes, that's exactly what you're currently using. And that's exactly what's hurting your business. Let's fix this. Download a plugin called WP Mail SMTP and activate it. Now we need to choose who will be our email provider. Of course, you can have paid providers. Like most of these services are paid, like Google Mail. It costs around $7 per email box, but you're not forced to use that. You can use free tier options like SendGrid or Brevo, or you can simply use the free email that came together with your hosting provider. For example, I'll use Hostinger, which offers several mailboxes for free, 
for one year for new users. They recently changed this because old users can use up to 100 emails for free with any plan. Anyways, to configure our free Hostinger email, choose Other SMTP. Then navigate to the Hostinger emails and click Manage next to your email box. On the left side, look for the Connect Apps and Devices and Jackpot. This is what we need, the SMTP data. So copy the SMTP host for encryption. Ideally, you want TLS and I recommend checking TLS first, but for Hostinger, it only worked using SSL for me for this video. Then copy and paste the port, type in your email logins, including the name and the password. For me, it's emit at emitsecure.com and then the password. Choose your from name and from email and it should be done after skipping through all of these extra steps and menus. Then SMTP will do a quick check and tell you if everything's working fine or, or if there are errors. If you get an error, switch from TLS to SSL. Immediately, this helps you a ton with email deliverability because now you're not relying on an old, outdated and insecure email protocol that just screams, please put me in the spam folder. I have no idea what I'm doing. But for more email tips and tricks, I have a separate video. I don't want to make this all about just emails, but I could. And I did in this video right here, if you're interested on how to get out of the spam tab. Overall, I have like 10 more mistakes I see people make constantly and I could go on about, but they're more along the lines of making your website faster and performing better for the money that you're spending. So I'll make a separate video on website optimization. For now, if you fix these six things, you're already better off than 99% of website owners. But for now, I highly recommend you check out this video next once I'm done making it. <laughs> so I'll show you how to optimize your website for the best performance and avoid all of the beginner performance mistakes to get the best bang for your buck. But for now, good luck hosting your websites, discount links in the description, and check out my channel for more cool stuff just like this.